You are listening to the Screen to Screen Selling Talk Show, hosted by Doug DeVitri, your source to increasing sales, productivity, and the customer experience. In each show, we will sit down with world-class thought leaders to discuss latest trends, innovative concepts, and ideas to keep you ahead of the curve using the latest technology. Welcome, everybody, today to the show. We have Mark Hunter. He's the author of High Profit Selling. And when you think about, about selling value and not compromising uh, you know, your commission but on price, there's nobody better than Mark. Mark, welcome to the show today. Thank you for having me on. Looking forward to it. <laughs> you know, one of the things I, I heard from uh, CEO of Click With Me Now, Bud Albers, is he said that the internet is is inherently deflationary, which means that when you look at prices and you look at uh, what things cost online, there's a, there's a downward pressure on price. How can a professional salesperson, or even in this case for screen to screen, uh, inside sales profession, professional, uh, build value uh, rather than just selling a price? Well, I'll tell you what, that's a great statement and I very much agree with it. It is. It, deflationary is what the internet's all about. The key is that the salesperson, it doesn't matter who you are, you have to bring insights and ideas to your customers that they can't find on the internet. Anything your customer can find on the internet is going to mean you're going to be replaced. So in other words, you've got to get, you've got to get totally outside that comfort zone. So what is, what are the questions? What are the ideas? What are the insights you can be sharing with your customers? And that's why screen to screen share, you know, is so important because what does it do? It allows dialogue. That's really where the value comes through. Yeah. And you know, <clears throat> dialogue <clears throat> over the phone, we can have that conversation screen to screen. We can start to, you know, put in some, some visuals to be able to demonstrate our expertise. Um, what are some of the ideas that you have that uh, sales professionals can, can use with that? Well, one of the things that I love to ask salespeople is, what are the types of questions that you're asking your customers? And there's three levels of questions that salespeople tend to ask. They ask questions that the customer can answer, but they can't. They ask questions that the customer can't answer, but they can't. And that's the most typical question. You know, salespeople love to ask customers questions that they can't answer, but, oh, they're going to put that super salesperson cape on and answer the question. Garbage. I want to be asking customers questions that they can't answer and I can't answer. When I get to that point, I'm now at a point of dialogue that transcends anything you're going to be able to find on the Internet and I'm gonna to get to real insight, real discussion, creating real value. Yeah, that's really interesting. What, what are some of those, the, what are some examples of some of those questions that you can't answer and they can't answer off the, be at the beginning? Well, it, well, an example might be is, is if I'm selling hardware and I, I'm, do, I'm, doing, I'm doing a screen to screen sharing, you know, and I you know, got this person on and we're going through and, and, and the problem is we get into these capabilities. This is, this is what I'm capable of doing. I don't wanna do that. What I wanna do is, what are the strategic issues you as an organization are facing and, and how confident are you at being able to address those in the coming years? Now think about that. The typical person is not going to be able to answer that question and the salesperson is neither. Now that's a very strategic question, but what I like to do is this, I call it stop or stoop. I want to develop questions that are S T O go ahead and put in a second O P strategic, tactical, operational, outcome, performance. If I develop questions around each of those five, I'm certainly gonna have at least one or two of those that are gonna be able to hit home and resonate and create that discussion. Yeah, it's interesting because we're not talking about specific services, we're not talking about features, we're not talking about benefits, we're talking about issues. Right. Right. Yeah. And it really comes down to, you know what the customer is looking for is outcomes. They want outcomes. And I don't care if you're B2B, B2C or B2G. B2G, business to government. That's a new term I'm really trying to push out there because it is a completely different model. Yeah. But if you think about it, nobody is looking to buy. What they are doing is they're looking to invest and they want to have an outcome. How do I help the customer see the outcome that they're going to realize is going to exceed the amount of investment I'm looking for them to make? Yeah, and I think when, 
when inside sales professionals think of being able to sell, they're going to deliver it in a webinar, webinar format where, you know, we have 60 slides and in 60 minutes, <laughs> it's like, it's like, how do you discuss issues when you have all of these prepared slides? That, that, that's right. I mean, you know, you know, the sad comment there is the person who's doing that has done nothing more than move the capabilities presentation, which used to be the 30 page brochure that you'd walk them through sitting across their desk and moved it to an online function. I'm sorry. Can I get the handgun right now? Because that's, that's the whole problem. Now I want to start off with a slide or two. I want to have some pictures. I want to have some diet, but it's only designed to generate conversation. Yeah. Yeah. And what would be some, let's say examples of a slide or maybe a visual that would start a conversation that's really focused on the customer and not on, you know, the product or the service. Well, yeah, what we want to look to is, and I hate to use this example, but it, it works. It works well. Pain or gain, you know, is the customer feeling pain or is the customer looking for gain? So what I want to do is how do I create a visual? that emphasizes the pain or emphasizes the gain. You know what's interesting is, many times when we do online selling, we have allowed ourselves to get caught up and we gotta create fishbone diagrams and we gotta create all these complex things. And sometimes I forget one of the really cool tools that we can, we can just simply put up a visual picture. Put up a visual picture with a question off on the side. You know, think about that. It's the same thing that you or I do when we're speaking in front of an audience. You know, we, we both do a lot of speaking in front, in front of live audiences and we'll just put up, there'll just be a picture they'll, or there'll be a picture with maybe a question. We can do those same techniques when we're doing online selling. And I think it generates that level of discussion because here's the whole thing. It's not the question I ask or the comment I make that is what we're looking for. No, I'm looking for the customer to respond and then me to drill down a couple more times. You know, I kind of use the example, the customer is a little bit like an onion and I got to peel back layers. And I, boy, this is especially true if you think about it in B to C selling. Yeah. You know, you might be in real estate or something like that. And a person says, oh, they, they like this home or they like this. That's garbage. Why do they like that home? What are the real specifics? Somebody might be selling insurance. Same thing. Well, I'm, I want to take care of my kids after I'm garbage. What are the real specifics in B2B? You know, it, you, you really start to peel the onion. Now it's really creepy if you're looking at, at your customer as if they're an onion. That's a whole different, that's a whole different, <laughs> I'm not, not even going to go down that road. Well, you know, it brings up, brings up a couple of things in my mind when working with, a customer who's focused on price and they say they want to know, you know, how much does this cost? And that, that, that question keeps coming up as you, even as you start to try to drill, drill down, uh, how do you overcome that objective with a customer who's specifically focused on price? Well, I'll tell you what, sometimes the most profitable sales you'll ever make are the ones you don't get. And that's really scary because it's really hard to walk away from business. But I'll tell you what, anybody who's looking to maximize price, has to be willing to walk away. Because once you start discounting, you will discount everything. It becomes a drug, it becomes very addictive. Now, here's the whole key thing. The customer that's focused on price. If they're focused on price, that means they're very feature oriented and yes, they're an economic buyer. I don't wanna deal with an economic buyer. I wanna deal with an outcome buyer. So if you think about this, outcome buyers are focused on two things. They're focused on, intellectual insight and emotion. And oh, by the way, both of those fit, whether it be B2B or B2C. Sometimes I think people get hung up to think, well, I'm in B2C selling and that's dramatically different from B2B or I'm in B2B and that's, no, you know what? The similarities are a lot more. We always look for intellectual insight. We wanna be able to rationalize why this makes sense. But then at the end of the day, believe me, there is emotion behind it that sudden urge becomes emotion. That's what I want to focus in on. Yeah, man, this, I, I love it. Uh, outcome buyer versus economic buyer. Um, what are the specific outcomes? How do you drill down using visuals? And really, I think even the mistake that I find with using technology is that technology becomes the focus of the attention, especially when we're screen to screen. <laughs> and 
how many times does that get in the way of trying to you know build value hi i'm here just to work the computer and provide voiceover oh man you know it that's why i always tell salespeople if you can't deliver your presentation without any materials without any any support you really aren't capable of presenting your material because the argument or the 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 actual quote i use is the best presentation ever made is the presentation never given uh what it means is I know my stuff so well, I've got everything set up so well, but I don't have to use it if I don't need to, because I am the presentation. Boy, that's brilliant, Mark. Um, <clears throat> any, 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 any final thoughts as we start to you know, move into a century where everything's, anything, everything's technology driven? Well, yes, don't lose sight. Don't allow the technology to overwhelm you because still at the end of the day, just as you and I are talking, and you know, before we began this, we were talking about what was going on in our respective lives and so forth. There is still very much the personal aspect. And one of the things that I think we get hung up is we feel because we're in this digital age, and it's not, you know, it's not web 2.0. I think we're up to about web 14.0, you know, we, that all this emotion, no, it's still very much there. The ability for the salesperson to be able to connect. And if you think about this, the believability the customer has in you will only be equal to the level of credibility you've established with them. Mm. And the credibility comes not just in your knowledge, but also comes in who you are. And I think we're actually going to see a higher value being placed on that emotional, I don't want to say emotional, but that, that, that human standpoint of being able to connect. Because when you can do that, wow, now you've, you've jumped a shark from a technology standpoint because you're using technology, but you're still putting yourself into the middle of it. Yeah, no, that, that's great, Mark. And I would encourage everybody to go out and get, uh, if you don't have a copy already, Mark's book, uh, High Profit Selling. It's one of those ones that, <laughs> yes. <laughs> shameless promoter, shameless promoter. <laughs> I know, it kind of makes me feel like, what do, what do, we, what do I got in the back? Um, that's my technology, my 48 inch or whatever it is, television back there. <laughs> We really appreciate your time, your perspective, and, and your expertise, Mark. You've been a great friend, and um, thanks for being part of the show today. Hey, thank you so much. Great selling. <laughs> you are listening to the Screen to Screen Selling Talk Show, hosted by Doug DeVitri, your source to increasing sales, productivity, and the customer experience. In each show, we will sit down with world-class thought leaders to discuss latest trends, innovative concepts, and ideas to keep you ahead of the curve using the latest technology. Oh, congratulations! Yeah.